good evening students so uh, the recent amendments uh, which is important for uh, the recent amendments uh, which is important for your coming examination the objective type questions allame mostly will be from the recent amendments only what are the uh, what are the recent um, some amendments are very simple uh, some amendments some amendments are important for your examination i have included all the amendments which we have already discussed so we will just go through one by one now the first one is a very simple one uh, maximum rate most probably uh, it is only an intermediate uh, question a maximum rebate of 12500 under section 87a for resident individuals in case taxable income does not exceed 5 lakhs during the previous year a maximum rebate of rupees 12500 under section 87a for resident individuals in case taxable income does not exceed 5 lakhs correct so less than 5 lakhs you will get a maximum rebate of 12500 so this is only an intermediate question one minute students next up a surcharge of 10 percentage a surcharge of 10 percentage in case taxable income exceeds rupees 50 lakhs you know all these surcharge rates above 1 crore it is 15 percentage above 2 crores it is 25 percentage and above 5 crore it is 37 percentage now these two are uh, uh, not that important for examination a uh, final level ka but the third one can be important it is only for your understanding students uh, uh, higher surcharge of 25 and up to last year we had 10 and 15 up to last year we had 10 and 15 later those who have income above 2 crores have to pay 25% surcharge and by above 5 crores 37 this is called higher surcharge this 25% and 37 percentage shall not be applicable for capital gains on sale of listed shares so this capital gain um, for the capital gain on because the foreign institutional investors who uh, invest in india uh, who invest in india uh, if uh, the tax rate is 25 or say the surcharge rate is 25 the effective tax rate will be on the higher side so capital gains on sale of listed shares uh, about 2 crores or above 5 crores if it, the surcharge rate is 25 and 37 the effective tax rate can be on the higher side therefore they may move out of india to other uh, countries for investment therefore to retain investment in india to retain foreign investment in india government uh, has removed the uh, higher percentage high 25 10 and 15 are applicable 10 and 15 are applicable the question is only for 25 and 37 higher surcharge 25 and 37 percentage not applicable for capital gains on sale of listed shares on sale of listed shares therefore one you uh, suppose if uh, capital gain uh, on sale of listed shares and uh, say it is more than 2 crore or more than 5 crore you need not apply this surcharge rate you have to simply apply 15 percentage so 25 and 37 percentage not applicable for capital gain i'll give some examples to understand so higher surcharge of 25 percentage and 37 percentage not applicable for capital gains not all capital gains only for sale of listed shares because uh, the foreign institution investors who invest in india uh the tax if 25 and 37 percentage is a surcharge rate then the tax rate effective tax rate could be on the higher side therefore government decided to drop 25 percentage and 37 percentage for capital gains on sale of this for all capital gains on sale of listed shares so if you have a uh, long term capital gain or short term capital gain on sale of listed shares which is above 5 crores or which is above 2 crores still you need to pay only 15 percentage and um, one more important point uh, the understanding is not i am not saying this is important but the next one therefore surcharge rate applicable on other income therefore surcharge rate applicable on other income other income means like salary house property business income income from other sources is as follows uh, if total income read this point if total income excluding capital gains on sale of listed shares after excluding after excluding capital gains if total income does not exceed 2 crores it is 15 percentage if total income excluding capital gain on sale of listed shares is above 2 crores 
but not but up to 5 crores 25 percentage this is on other income i'm talking other income surcharge rate on other income surcharge rate on other income uh, excluding capital gains after excluding capital gain on sale of listed shares if it is less than 2 crores pay 15 percentage if it is more than if total income is more than 2 crore pay 25 percentage if total income is more than 5 crore then pay 37 percentage surcharge on other income just uh, uh, for an understanding purposes, say it is like this. Say income from business. Students, this can be asked as a two mark question. Suppose income from business is 2 crore 50 lakhs. Okay. Long term capital gain on sale of listed shares. That is uh, under section 112a or 10 percent tax on the long term capital gain on sale of this rate is two crores okay and short term capital gain on sale of listed shares again say this is one crore 50 lakhs and this is under section 111a this is 10 percent tax and this is 15 percent tax tax rate this is tax rate now the question is uh, okay, sir. What will be the surcharge applicable, sir? Now, now the total income, if you see, including capital gains, it is six crores. It is six crores. Total income is six crores. So, but uh, higher surcharge not applicable for capital gains. I, point number one: higher surcharge, twenty-five percentage or thirty-seven percentage, not applicable for capital gains on sale of listed shares okay so then what is the surcharge rate 15 percentage is applicable 15 percentage is applicable okay now what about um, what about surcharge what about surcharge rate on other income that is on business income sir what surcharge rate i have to pay now here it this is uh, Total income, students, total income uh, excluding capital gains. Total income excluding capital gains on sale of listed shares is more than 2 crores, but less than 5 crores. Hence, 25% on other income. That's all students. You have to exclude these two. After excluding these two, if total income, if total income is more than 2 crores, you have to pay 15, 25%. You have to pay 25%. If this is after excluding capital gains, if this is more than 5 crores, then you have to pay 37%. Uh, so, uh, just uh, don't go uh, by this information. Don't go by the total income, including capital gains. After excluding, see, for these two, it is surcharge rate is higher surcharge 25 or 37 is not applicable for these two. Only 15 percentage. Then what about surcharge rate on other income? Surcharge rate on other income, total income, total income is 6 crores. Excluding capital gains. If I exclude these two, it is only 2 crore 50 lakhs, which is more than 2 crore, but less. So apply 25% surcharge. So blindly don't go by this information. Blindly don't go by this information. You have to exclude these two. You have to exclude these two only to apply only to see whether 25 percentage or 37 percentage is applicable or not you have to exclude these two initially it may confuse you you have to exclude these two only to see if surcharge rate is 25 percentage or 37 percentage so here i will say it is 25 percent because it is other income is more than two crore but less than five crore so that is the answer okay students now We'll take up some examples here. Now, you, you try this first. Income from business is two and a half crore. More or less similar example. Long term capital gain under 112A, 3 crore 1 lakh. 
short term capital gain under section 111a is 1 crore total income is 6 crore 51 lakhs what will be the surcharge rate on this this and this sir for long term capital gain now <clears throat> if i go by this information I would come to a wrong conclusion, which is 37 percentage wrong. So higher surcharge 25 percentage or 37 percentage is not applicable for capital gain on sale of listed shares. 112A is listed shares. 111A is listed shares. This is 10 percent tax. This is 15 percent tax. For long term capital gain, you will get 1 lakh exemption. You will get 1 lakh exemption. Then balance 3 crore will be taxed at 10% only. Short term capital gain, 15% tax. Now, so the surcharge rate will be 15 percentage for long term. Surcharge rate will be 15 percentage for short term. These two. So, yeah. Now, what about other income? Sir, so, other income excluding capital gains excluding capital gains if it is more than 2 crore i have to pay 25 percent surcharge students i have given here as a note higher surcharge 25 percent and 37 percentage are not applicable for long-term capital gain under section 112a and under section uh, short term calendar 111 a therefore what shall be the surcharge rate on business income in the business income, can I surcharge pay for no? Is it 37 percent? Because students may come to a wrong conclusion that total income, including capital gain, is more than 5 crore. Therefore, I have to pay 37 percentage on this. But the answer is it 37 percentage? No. The answer is total income, excluding capital gain, exceeds 2 crore but does not exceed 5 crore. Excluding capital gain, excluding these two, excluding these two, uh, you can see it is only two and a half crore. Therefore, the surcharge rate will be 25 percentage on business income and 15 percentage on long term capital gain and short term capital gain. So that is the point, students. Now, coming to this uh, question. Now, here you will have a confusion. Here, you will have a confusion. During the previous year, 1920, Mr. R has short-term capital gain of 95 lakhs under 111A. Long-term capital gain of 110 lakhs under 112A. This is listed shares, 10% tax. This is 15% tax. And business income of 90 lakhs. Which of the following statement is correct? Okay, now this is as good as here. We are, I'll show you the same example here. Okay, now just go through this. If you have understood this, this is also similar question. Okay, now listen. Mr. X, an individual, furnishes the following for the previous year, 1920. He wants to know the applicable surcharge rate on his income. The total is 2 crore 11 lakhs. Sir, since the total income is more than 2 crore, should I apply 25, 25, 25? Wrong answer. First of all, for capital gain on sale of listed shares, higher surcharge not applicable. So 25 percentage is wrong. It is 15 in the place of 25. It is 15 in the place of 25. Whereas surcharge rate on your other income, surcharge rate, on other income. So business income excluding capital gains. Business income excluding capital gains. If it is less than, if it is more than 2 crore. Business income or other income excluding capital gain. If it is more than, no sir, if I exclude these two, it is not more than 2 crores. So it is going to be only 15 percentage because total income is more than 1 crore. Total income is more than 1 crore. See, 15 for 15 percentage, you have to see the total income, including capital gain. 
Fifteen percent is problem level. See, I'll I'll tell you once again. Try to understand. If other income, yes, sir, business income is other income, ex excluding capital gains. Okay. If it is more than two crore, upon that twenty five percent down. Illa na the total income is more than one crore. Therefore, pay fifteen percentage. You cannot say it has not exceeded one crore. Therefore. In given ten percent, wrong, wrong, wrong. See, the concession is given only for higher twenty-five and thirty-seven. The twenty-five and thirty-seven, then you have to exclude this and see whether this is more than two crores for twenty-five percentage or excluding this, you have to see whether it is more than five crore for thirty-seven percentage. But uh, after excluding this, if it is not more than two crore. But the total income is more than one crore, so fifteen percentage is applicable. So students, you might have confusion in this. I have given the explanation. Go through this question with the answer, and the same is given here, and the same is given here. Same similar question only. The answer I will give. It is B. Uh, all are taxable at fifteen percentage. Long short term capital gain ninety five lakhs, fifteen percentage. Long term one ten lakhs fifteen percent surcharge rate and business income excluding these two exclude. See if you add everything, it is more than two crore. But twenty five percent is not applicable for these two. Higher surcharge is not applicable for these two. Only fifteen percentage is applicable for these two. Okay, when it comes to other income, uh, other income. Excluding these two, if it is more than two crore, apply twenty five percentage. Excluding these two, if it is more than five crore, apply. Otherwise, the overall total you can see yes, sir, fifteen percentage. Therefore, surcharge rate is fifteen percentage on total income of two point nine five crores. Ninety five plus one ten plus ninety two point nine five crore. Answer, student. That's all. The next one. wait i'll give you some time for you to ask questions maybe you will be having some doubt but you can go through that and you can understand your on your own standard deduction standard deduction is most probably an intermediate question only but to a surprise sometimes this question can also be uh, sometimes a surprise question like this a standard deduction for salaried people standard deduction for salaried people 50000 rupees is the standard deduction for all salaried people standard deduction is Fifty thousand. Last year it was forty thousand. Now it is fifty thousand. And then very important provision, but it is again a house property provision related to house property, uh, which is most probably intermediate question amendment only. But uh, being uh, uh, considering its importance, it can also be asked at the final level. See, I'll give an example. Uh, say for example. Mr. A owns two houses for self-occupation. Mr. A owns two houses for self-occupation. House one is used by his parents. House two is used by him and his family. Okay, this is used by his parents, and this is used by him and his family. Interest on loan. Interest on loan. First house is uh, say two lakh ten thousand. Just an example to understand. House two. House two two lakhs fifty thousand. Okay. Now students up to last year. Up to last year. Now uh, why for the past twenty twenty five years since I started teaching. Uh, See the annual value of only one house can be zero. That is, if house one, you can choose house one as self-occupied. That is your choice at the at the option of the assessee. So you can make this annual value sir is on the nil. Okay, then let's sec section twenty four uh, interest on home loan. Interest on home loan. Two lakh ten crore to kanga sir. Maximum deduction for house property self occupied is two lakhs. So minus two lakhs. But what will happen to house two? House two 
even though it is self occupied it will be deemed as let out it will be treated as let out and accordingly income will be computed so market fair rent will be taken and then uh, less municipal tax as if it is a let out property so nav less section 24 standard deduction and interest on this was so the annual value of only one house can be zero the other house even though it is but it is your choice you can choose either house one for zero or you can choose house two as nil and offer house one for let out but from this year onwards students from this year onwards from assessment year 2021 the annual value of two houses as per the option available to the assessee can be nil so for two houses nil or club for example house 1 self occupied sir apo annual value nil annual value nil less section 24 interest on home loan maximum deduction 2 lakhs okay so this you can show it as loss to be set off against say your salary income if you are a salaried employee similarly house to also annual value of two houses can be zero therefore annual value nil less section 24 set so 250 no maximum 2 lakhs now the question arises whether house 1 and house 2 both put together the total loss is 4 lakhs the answer government clarify maximum loss uh maximum loss that can be set off cannot exceed rupees 2 lakhs that's all so here there is 1 2 lakhs here also there is 2 lakhs both put together it is 4 lakhs but you cannot so being a self occupied property maximum loss allowed to be set off is only 2 lakhs so this is the new amendment brought in students so the annual value of the annual value of two houses can be zero the annual value of two houses can be zero so that is the amendment added this year now where the assessee owns more than where the assessee owns more than two houses for self occupation the annual value of eight, suppose more than two houses three houses self occupied nichukonga if the assessee owns three houses for self occupation house one self occupied house two self occupied house three self occupied then annual value of any two houses according to his choice according to his choice shall be zero and the remaining properties shall be treated as let out okay it is clarified that the deduction of interest for both the houses shall not exceed 2 lakhs in aggregate now the question is mr raghav has three houses for self occupation mr raghav has three houses for self occupation what would be the tax treatment what would be the tax treatment for assessment year 2021 in respect of income from house property three houses for self occupation three houses for self occupation what would be the tax treatment uh, one house at the option of mr raghav would be treated as self occupied the other two the other two houses the other two houses would be deemed as let out is it correct this was up to last year two houses at the option of mr raghav would be treated as self occupied two houses at the option of mr raghav would be treated as self occupied the last the other house would be deemed as let out is it correct or one house at the option of the assessing officer would be treated as self assessing officer will decide which should be self occupied and which should be treated as let out is it correct or two houses at the option of the assessing officer would be treated as self occupied is it at the option of the assessing officer or is it at the option of the assessee it is at the option of the assessee 
and the annual value of two houses, the annual value of two houses can be nil. The annual value of two houses can be can be nil from this assessment here. So if three houses are self-occupied, if three houses are self-occupied, two houses, the annual value of two houses can be zero. The third one will be deemed as let out and it is as per the option of the assessee. So this is one more point, students. Now for the previous year, 1920, Mr. A has salary income of eight and a half lakhs. He owns two houses and both the houses are self-occupied. Interest on loan taken for purchase of these houses amounted to rupees 1,60,000 each and he has eligible deduction under section 80C of rupees 1 lakh. Compute his tax liability for assessment year 2021. For the previous year 1920, Mr. A has salary income of 8 and a half lakhs. He owns two houses. He owns two houses and both the houses are self-occupied. Interest on loan taken for purchase of these houses amounted to 1,60,000 each. And he has eligible deduction under section 80C, 1 lakh compute is tax liability. I have included some two, three amendments here. Okay, now first salary income, eight and a half lakhs. So standard deduction, 50,000. That is amendment number one. So income from salary, eight lakhs. And he owns two houses. Both the houses are self-occupied. Okay, from this year onwards, annual value of two houses can be zero. Interest on loan is 160 for house one and 160 for house two. Total is 320. But uh, it cannot exceed 2 lakhs. It cannot exceed 2 lakhs. So it is clarified that the deduction of interest for both the houses shall not exceed 2 lakhs. So it should be restricted to 2 lakhs. The loss cannot be more than 2 lakhs. And then ATC deduction is 1 lakh. Compute is tax liability. Now students listen. If every solve for another simple question. Now, income from salary, it is 8 lakh 50 minus standard deduction. So it is 8 lakhs. Correct. Then loss from self-occupied property. Is going to be 2 lakhs. Correct. How did you get the gross total income? Gross total income less chapter <clears throat> six A deductions. Chapter six A deductions. Section ATC. It is given as one lakh. So total income. Total income is five lakhs. Tax on the above. So 5 lakhs to tax 12,500. Less rebate under section 87A. Since total income, total income does not exceed 5 lakhs. Since total income does not exceed 5 lakhs, entire amount will entire amount of tax will be allowed as rebate. So tax due will be zero. Note, so house one, house two, both are self-occupied, both are self-occupied, annual value from this year on annual value of two houses can be nil, less section 24, 1,60,000, 1,60,000. So loss 160, house one, loss 160. So total loss of rupees 3,20,000 shall be restricted to rupees 2 lakhs only. That's all students. So small, small adjustments. Next up. Now coming to business income. Now 48.3. Any payment exceeding 10,000. You cannot pay by cash or bearer check. Leon, 
any payment exceeding 10,000. Payment exceeding 10,000 shall be made only by account pay check or account pay bank draft or use of ECS. Correct, sir. Account pay check or account pay bank draft or use of ECS. Correct. Other than we studied. But now government has introduced or it can also be through such electronic mode as may be prescribed. So anything through the electronic mode as prescribed by the government. electronic mode payment So if the payment is made because Nariya business transactions are wherever if you go online payment, some other electronic mode, not necessarily debit card or a credit card, but some other electronic mode it is allowed. So government has added this point ma, through, um, yes, sir. Uh, so balance, one second. And the one student is asking balance, so house property level will it be carried forward? No, it will not be carried forward. Maximum deduction is 2 lakhs, that's all. So this is uh, not a major amendment, but about 10,000 you can pay by up and pay check or up and pay bank draft or through ECS. Now government has added or it can also be through such electronic mode as may be prescribed by the government. Now students next on the 43B if you remember any um, any expenditure that is uh, any payment made to the government. What is 43B? Deduction only on payment basis. Deduction only on payment basis. Other any payment made to the government which is in the nature of tax, duty or cess. Any payment made to the government which is in the nature of tax, duty or cess. Arimari, employees uh, bonus commission, graduity, leave salary, employer's contribution towards provident fund, all these will be allowed only on payment basis. Payment should be made before due date of filing income tax return or else the expenditure shall be disallowed. You will remember that. Ademari bank loan wangi. If the interest is not paid within the due date, the same shall be disallowed. It can be banks. It can be um, public financial institutions. And then amount payable to railways for using railway assets. Is along the 43B. Now students, Loan interest on loan borrowed from banks or public financial institutions. Now, government has added NBFCs also to this list. So, interest payable on any loan borrowed from banks or public financial institutions or cooperative banks or from now, this has been newly added deposit taking NBFCs. Or systemically important non deposit taking NBFC. Deposit taking NBFC. Non deposit taking NBFC. Deposit taking NBFC. Systemically important non What is deposit taking NBFC? So, if you can now loans borrowed from deposit taking NBFCs or systemically important non-deposit taking NBF have also been meaning. Suppose in case you have taken a loan from NBFC, interest up to last year, interest was allowed on due basis, but now NBFCs are also covered under 43B. So interest on loans borrowed from NBFCs shall be allowed only on payment basis. If payment is not made before due date, the same shall be disallowed. But not all NBFCs, it is either a deposit taking NBFC or systemically important. Systemically important non deposit taking. What is deposit taking uh, NBFC? What is systemically important non deposit? Maybe this, just for your knowledge purpose, it is given. But remember, students, they have added NBFCs to this list. So, bank la matto loan wangi interest pay pan namar na disallowed. So, it is banks, public financial institutions, 
cooperative banks, and now they have added NBFCs, deposit taking NBFCs, and non deposit taking NBFCs. What is non deposit taking NBFC? Just read all these before examination. You don't know, there's a problems in the KKMD, but knowledge is essential. Just go through this provision also. The next point rates of depreciation on motor buses, motor lorries, and motor taxes. Normally, car is 15% down depreciation. Car is normally 15%. But if car is used as a taxi, if it is used as a taxi, 30% higher rate. Because taxi use per number, the depreciation should be more. Suppose, uh, say you are a professionally qualified uh, past accountant or a company secretary in practice, you have your own car for professional use, you can claim 15% depreciation. So car normally uh, the rate of depreciation is 15%. But if the car is used as a taxi, then the higher rate and 30 percentage will be the rate of depreciation. But in order to uh, promote automobile industry, finance minister upon a notification, through a notification, she brought in this provision. If cars are acquired during the period 23rd August 2019 till 31st March 2020, and put to use before 31st March 2020, instead of 15%, you will get 30%. And if it is used as a taxi, instead of 30%, you'll get a higher rate of depreciation, 45. So there are several advantages. Okay. Uh, not only for electric car, you will get 80 EEB interest on loan. Uh, 1 lakh 50 thousand and if the car is purchased during this period and put to use before the end of the previous year you will get 30 percentage deficit, so higher depreciation and if it is electric vehicle 80 ee dealer 1 lakh 50 thousand on account of interest correct so there are a lot of tax benefits so higher rate of students this can be asked in your examination just a rate can be asked in your examination Normally it is 15, sir. Car the depreciation 15, taxi are in the 30. But if cars purchased during this period, 23rd August to 31st March, and put to use before 31st March, 30 percentage. But uh, many places the lockdown started, so other headache. So 30 percentage is the uh, higher rate of depreciation. If the taxi I use for now, you get a higher rate of 45 percentage. So please go through this which is important. Coming to capital gains. Capital gains, what is important? Sir, up to last year, since I started teaching, um, capital gains on the uh, section 54, la, exemption is available only for one residential house. Exemption is available only for one residential house. But from this assessment year onwards, if capital, if the amount of capital gains does not exceed two crores, where the amount of capital gains does not exceed two crore, capital gain two crore exceed agalena, capital gain two crore exceed agalena, then exemption can be availed in respect of two residential houses, correct? Uh, once in a lifetime. So once in a lifetime, you can claim exemption under section 54 in respect of two residential houses. But this is once in a lifetime provided capital gain does not exceed two crores. So this is important. If amount of capital gain exceeds two crores, exemption is available for one house. If amount of capital gain does not exceed two crores, then once in a lifetime, you can claim exemption for two residential houses. Next to my students are chapter six, eight deductions. Now, chapter 6 deductions, you know the uh, ATEA. Refer section ATEA. So, one minute. So, you, you know AT reason, just Mr. R has purchased his first house in Gwalior for self-occupation on 5th April 2019 for 45 lakhs. 
stamp duty value being the same with bank loan sanctioned on 30th March 2019 and disbursed on 3rd April 2019. He paid interest of 3.8 lakhs during the previous year 1920. What will be the tax treatment of the interest paid? Sir, interest paid 3.8 lakhs during the previous year 1920. Interest paid 3.8 lakhs during the previous year 1920. House is a self-occupied property. So, first point, under section self-occupied annual value nil, less section 24, interest on home loan 3.8 lakhs, maximum deduction 2 lakhs. And another 1,50,000 as a C can claim under section 80 WA total interest paid, total interest paid 3.8 lakhs, 2 lakhs under section 24 and 1,50,000 under section 80 WA provided certain conditions are satisfied. Condition number one, the stamp duty value of the house should not exceed 45 lakhs. The stamp duty value of the house should not, yes sir, stamp duty value is also the same, 45 lakhs exceed other. Second point, the loan should be borrowed from a bank or a housing finance company, sir, bank loan, sir. Third point, the loan should be sanctioned during the previous year, uh, 1419 to 313-2020. The loan should be sanctioned during the previous year, 1419. The loan should be sanctioned during the previous year, 1419 to 313 2020. Anna Inga on the 30th, it is before 1419. Loan was sanctioned before 1419. Therefore, ATEA deduction is not available. ATEA deduction is not available. Hence, the answer is he is eligible for 2 lakhs interest under section 24. That's all. Suppose if the date, suppose uh, if I'm changing the date, say it is uh, 5th of April, 5th of May 2020, for example. Apo, sir, he can claim um, 2 lakhs un un under section 24, 2 lakhs under section 24, and 1 lakh 50 maximum under section ADEEA. Correct, students? So, anyway, I have done uh, some um, in directions. Okay, now, so, and one more thing on the date of sanction of loan, on the date of sanction of loan, he should not own any residential house. This deduction is only, this incentive is only for first time home buyers. So this is his first house, everything is okay. Here yeah, it is self-occupied, the loan was taken from a bank, uh, stamp duty value does not exceed the 45 lakhs, everything is fine. But loan was sanctioned before 1419, therefore 1,50,80 WA is not available. So, deduction available will be only 2 lakhs. Correct, our students. And then, uh, ATEB, a uh, motor vehicle, electric vehicle. The following particulars relate to Mr. A, a salaried employee for assessment year 2021. Mr. A purchased an electric car for 22 lakhs for personal use. So, for this purpose, he borrowed a loan of 20 lakhs taken from NDFC at 10% per annum. The loan was sanctioned on 1419 and disbursed on 1519. Compute the amount of deduction available. This is what we did in the class, students. So, point number one loan should be borrowed for purchase of electric vehicle. Yes, sir. Second, the loan should be sanctioned during the period 1419 <coughs> to 313-2023. The loan should be sanctioned during the, pre during the period 1419 to 313-2023. Yes, sir, 1419. 
and then uh, the loan can be borrowed from bank or nbfc yes sir then what will be the amount of deduction sir sir 20 lakhs loan uh, 10% interest uh, loan was disbursed on 1519 20 lakhs into 10 percentage into 11 by 12 interest on car loan 20 lakhs into 10 percentage into 11 divided by 12 So we did the sum, which is equal to one lakh eighty-three thousand three thirty-three. And our loan disbursement on the May first day. Loan disbursed on May. Loan sanctioned on what first April, but it was given to you only on first May. Sanction date is different. Disbursement date is different. Okay. So therefore, deduction. Deduction under section eighty double B. Is to pay one lakh fifty thousand. That is the maximum. That is the maximum, right, students? Next step. It is there. We I am not numbering all this. You know, in our class, we put a sums now. Whatever we have done in directions. That's all, students. Next, uh, amendments are T T A B T T B um, deduction in respect of interest income. On any account, deduction in respect of interest income on any account with a bank or a post office or a cooperative bank by a senior citizen. It should be by a senior citizen. So, or a senior citizen ka, or a senior citizen ka, deduction fifty thousand rupees eighty TTB, fifty thousand rupees, fifty thousand rupees on account of interest income. On any deposit with a bank or a post office or a cooperative bank, any deposit, na, it can be a savings account, it can be a fixed deposit, it can be a recurring deposit. For example, pension received from railways, thirty thousand into twelve, three sixty, the salary, fifty thousand standard deduction. Income from house property, interest on FD with SBI. So interest on FD with SBI, you get fifty thousand rupees deduction. Correct. Interest on FD with post office, interest on savings account with the uh, Indian Overseas Bank, and medical insurance premium paid for him and his wife. Compute his total income. Now, every answer under this, just a small question. Income from salary, pension. Three lakh sixty thousand minus standard deduction. Standard deduction or no? So three lakh ten thousand, right? Income from house property <coughs> computed and given. It is computed and given. Sir, five lakhs. Okay. Then, sir, income from other sources. Interest on fixed deposit with SBI. With SBI, sixty-five thousand. Sixty-five ah? Ah yes, sir. Interest on FD with post office twelve thousand. Interest on FD with post office twelve thousand. And then interest on savings account with IOB. Our uh, sum amount of eight thousand. So all the three put together, gross total income, gross total income. This. Plus this, plus this, less chapter six A, section eighty D, maximum deduction fifty thousand medical insurance students, maximum for a senior citizen resident in India, senior citizen resident maximum fifty one pay per day. Thanga fifty one will not be available, and then being a senior citizen T D B is allowed T D B uh, actual interest. Actual interest eighty five thousand or limit fifty thousand. 
whichever is less. So senior citizen nala fifty thousand rupees deduction. So total income of the SSC, total income of the SSC, eight ninety five minus fifty minus fifty. So that's all. This is the final answer. And students here uh, just uh, for understanding purposes, provisions relating to senior citizens. What are the benefits, students? Basic exemption for a senior citizen. Basic exemption for a senior citizen is rupees three lakhs. Correct. I'm a resident senior citizens. And then a senior citizen. Now, what are the extra provisions? Basic exemption. Then section eighty D. You have uh, rupees fifty thousand. Uh, in respect of health insurance premium, correct up. Uh, plus, you have this welfare measure that is a medical expenditure, but not having a medical claim policy. Adon taranga less eighty then eighty DDB uh, maximum deduction is one lakh. Maximum deduction senior citizen resident in India medical expenditure. Uh, notified disease or ailment. Notified disease or ailment. Other one lakh, and then eighty TTB deduction on account of interest income maximum fifty thousand rupees. Then students advance tax provisions are not applicable for senior citizens if you recollect. Advance tax provisions are not applicable for senior citizens. Advance tax provisions are not applicable for senior citizens. Ilya, they can pay only at the time of filing return. So, and the interest under Section Two Thirty Four B, provided there's a condition, uh, uh, not having, not having business income. Correct. If you have business income, then advance tax provisions are applicable. So these are the few that comes to my mind immediately. So these are the basic things. Okay, now coming back to so amendments. Lab the last area. So in one night TDS. Now we are going to discuss TDS. One ninety four A for senior citizens above fifty thousand. The banks will deduct TDS. The banks, post office. About this only on time deposits. One important point is only on time deposit. TDS will be only on time deposit. Time deposit means fixed deposit plus recurring deposit. It is not on savings account. Okay, for senior citizens fifty thousand. For general citizens it was ten thousand up to last year. Now it has been extended, uh, increased to forty thousand. Suppose in case you have a fixed deposit, you have a fixed deposit of five lakhs. The bank pays you five percent interest, twenty-five thousand. Up to last year, about ten thousand. Banks have to deduct ten percent tax, but from this year onwards, the limit is increased to forty thousand. Therefore, this is the provision. Fifty thousand last year for senior citizens, but for general citizens. Now ten thousand has been increased to forty thousand. Up to forty thousand FD interest rate TDS kareya. One ninety four DA the life insurance maturity amount received from LIC. Uh, if it is taxable, TDS will be deducted. Now you can see it is with effect from first September two thousand nineteen. First September it is TDS rate is five percentage on income. Five percentage on income. What is income? What is income? What is income here? Income means maturity amount that you are going to receive. Maturity amount should exceed one lakh. Maturity amount should exceed one lakh. Point number one. And if maturity amount exceeds one lakh, then income. Uh, maturity amount should exceed one lakh, then TDS will be deducted at five percentage on income portion. What is income? Income means the maturity amount that you receive minus the premiums paid. So maturity amount I am receiving five lakhs. 
and premium paid is 4 lakhs 10,000. So the income portion is 90,000. Maturity amount, I'm going to get 5 lakhs. Premium paid is 4 lakhs 25,000. Say, for example, income is 75,000. On 75,000, 5% will be the tedious because maturity amount is more than 1 lakh. So this is the effect from 1st September 2019. So it's a 194DA. And then 194I students, uh, tedious on rent. It was 1,80,000. It was 1,80,000. But it was 1,80,000. Now, tedious on rent, the limit has been increased to 2,40,000. So less than 2,40,000, no tedious. More than 2,40,000, tedious will be <coughs> deducted. Tedious will be deducted. Next up. 194 IA. If you purchase an immovable property, if you purchase an immovable property, it is like this. Uh, uh, you have to detect one person Yamarka section 194 IA. 194 IA meaning purchase of purchase of immovable property, which is 50 lakhs or more, which is 50 lakhs or more. The buyer is required to deduct one percentage TDS on the purchase consideration. If what happens, uh, practically there was a problem like uh, purchase price of the house, purchase price of the house will be say 47 lakhs. Okay. Now, next up, add other payments. Car parking, car parking, two lakh fifty thousand. Okay, then maintenance, uh, one lakh. Next up, club fee, fifty thousand. Electricity, no something like that. Okay, electricity fee fifty. Now the question arises. Should, uh, should I consider 47 lakhs or is it all put together? 51 lakh, 50,000, which is more than 50. Is all the only this amount should be considered for the limit? Is it only the purchase price of the house or it includes all other payments as well? Arina, then government this year, they gave a clarification stating that consideration shall include all charges of the nature of club membership fee, car parking fee, electricity or water facility fee, maintenance fee, advance fee, or any other charges of similar nature, which are incidental to transfer of immovable property. So anything connected with sale of immovable property should also be included. For example, Mr. X purchased a residential flat from ABC Builders Chennai on 1st December to the 4th, 45 lakhs. In addition, to 45 lakhs, he also paid 3 lakhs as car parking fee, 2 lakhs as maintenance fee, 1 lakh as club membership fee, 1 lakh as electricity and water facility fee to ABC Builders Chennai. Is Mr. X required to deduct tax excess? Yes, because all put together, uh, all put together, consideration includes purchase price plus all payments made to the builder, which is 52 lakhs, therefore TDS at 1 percentage. So you should not consider only the purchase price 45 lakhs, but it is now the clarification has been given by the government. Consideration includes all other charges paid to the builder, all inclusive find out 52 lakhs, are, 50 lakhs or more than TDS has to be deducted. So other point. Then comes 194M, which is important for coming exam. See 194C contract payments, 194H, Commission or brokerage and 194J professional fee. These three sections are applicable only if you are subject to tax audit and if it is not a personal payment. Suppose if you are not subject to tax audit, these sections are not applicable. Or even though if you are subject to tax audit, if it is a personal payment, say this section, these sections are not applicable. I'll repeat once again. If you are subject to tax audit, and the payment is made, the payment made is a business payment, then this section is attractive. Suppose if you are not subject to tax audit, 
or even though if you are subject to tax audit but the payment made is a personal payment and not a business payment then the sections these sections are not applicable 194m shall apply and if the amount is 50 lakhs or more if the amount exceeds 50 lakhs 5% shall be the tds rate 5% shall be the tds rate so students just go through this example we'll take a small break of 2 minutes and then we will continue ready must start pannalam so if these three sections are not applicable then 194m will apply otherwise 194m is not applicable i'll repeat once again um uh, if you are subject to tax audit and the payment made is not a personal payment then you can deduct tds under these sections otherwise 194m 194m will apply only if these sections are not applicable and that too the limit is 50 lakhs 5 percentage with effect from 1998 example mr x salaried employee paid 51 lakhs so in example as brokerage to a broker on 1st december 19 for purchase of a residential house at bombay is the payment subject to tds if i state the section and the amount of tds sir actually salaried employee therefore this section h is not a brokerage on the 194h since he is a salaried employee he is not subject to tax audit and one more thing the payment is a personal payment as well assc is not subject to tax audit because he is a salaried person and also the payment is made uh, for purchase of a residential house which is a personal payment therefore this section is not applicable then 194m applies is it after 1st september 2019 yes sir 1st december is it above 50 lakhs yes sir 51 lakhs then 5% tax should be deducted and so that's all sir and last uh, 194en that is cash withdrawal cash withdrawal from a bank above 1 crore 2% tax will be deducted at source um cash withdrawal cash withdrawal from a bank account above 1 crore above 1 crore 2% tax will be deducted on the excess amount on the excess amount now for example Mr A has two bank accounts Mr A has two bank accounts maintained with ICICI and HDFC bank from 1st September 2019 till 31st March 2020 Mr A withdrew the following amounts as cash from both the said accounts so cash withdrawal above 1 crore is a problem cash withdrawal above 1 crore what is the need for withdrawing more than 1 crore from your account so you you have withdrawn cash which is more than 1 crore so normally for making some payment unaccounted payment alum pandrathukaga they would have take so government income tax department wants to keep track of those who have withdrawn more than 1 crore new amendment in cash so hdfc he has withdrawn 50 lakhs in cash it is less than 1 crore no problem but icici bank he has withdrawn more than 1 crore therefore more than one icici bank has to deduct tds at 2 percentage on 20 lakhs exceeding 1 crore so 120 lakhs minus 100 lakhs 20 lakhs into 2 percentage 40000 so the answer is for hdfc hdfc bank will not deduct tds why because the amount withdrawn Ah, uh, the cash withdrawn is less than one crore. Whereas ICICI Bank has to withdraw two percent. The TDS rate is two percent. So HDFC Bank nil, and ICICI Bank twenty lakhs into two percent. For it is not on the entire amount. It is on the excess amount. It is not on the entire amount. It is on the excess over and above hundred lakhs. And finally, students. filing of return last last example see if your total income for one second the new amendment one more new amendment maybe see uh, income from the income from business see miss uh, mr x is a businessman mr x is a businessman but this year what happened because of covid 19 his business was very uh, say 
um, was very poor and his business income was say eighty thousand rupees this year because seven months no business nothing like oh, okay fine extra income from other sources ten thousand gross total income ninety thousand less uh, chapter six year deductions chapter six year deductions nil total income ninety thousand. Now tax, tax zero. Now is he required to file return? The answer is no. No, is he required to file income tax return? The answer is no, sir. Total income is two and a half lakhs to come here. Why should I file return? Those who have income above two and a half lakhs have to file. This year my income is less than two and a half lakhs, but this year government has introduced a provision from assessment year. 2021 even though your income is less than two and a half lakhs if your electricity bill exceeds one lakh per annum students if your electric if you have paid electricity bill exceeding one lakh for your residence electricity bill one lakh mela pay pandravanga ellarume electricity bill above what those who pay electricity bill above one lakh even though income is less than two and a half lakhs even though Normal cases like is not required to file, but this year onwards, if you have paid electricity bill which is more than one lakh, or uh, expenditure on foreign travel, expenditure on foreign travel, expenditure incurred more than two lakhs, <coughs> expenditure incurred more than two lakhs, okay, or amount deposited. in current account is current on is more than 1 crore so those who fulfill any one because as he is a businessman assume he assume if he had paid more than 1 lakh electricity bill it is a problem he has to file his return or expenditure on foreign travel wherein he has incurred more than 2 lakh for him or for his family members or he has deposited more than 1 crore in current account Even though his income is less than two and a half lakhs, he is required to file his income tax return. So, <clears throat> deposited more than one crore in one or more current accounts. If the amount deposited is more than one crore, travel to foreign country more than two lakhs, electricity bill more than one lakh. So here is the one question here. So just find out this. Okay. The last one. Um, Is the answer, ma? Arun's gross total income is two lakh forty five. He deposits forty five in PPF account. So he pays electricity bill aggregating one point two lakhs. Is he required to file income tax return? Arun is required to file his income tax return since his electricity bill exceeds one lakh for the previous year, nineteen twenty. So these are the amendment students. You can expect objective type questions. You can expect objective type questions. I know. I have to send this through mail. I have to send uh, this to you. So wait, Pananga. Every all the other topics also I will send. Now that's all about the amendments area. Now uh, we shall take up uh, the next one. That is the capital gains. One minute. Capital gains, or we will take up deductions first. Anything. All are one and the same. Capital gains, ah, okay. Capital gains, only one section, ah, uh, one minute. Just a one fifty-four GB in our section, look, clear. Yeah. Fifty-four GB. Students, fifty-four GB. Uh, say you can sell a residential house. Read the heading alone. I will give an example. Transfer of a residential property, land or building, and subscription of equity shares in an eligible startup company. Sale of a residential property, whether it is a land or a building, and uh, investment in equity shares 
in an eligible startup company. Certain uh, definitions along with Karina. Now, listen. Suppose, one by one. Uh, for the previous year, just I'll give you an example. Previous year, 1920. Assessment year, 2021. And I will explain what is 54 GB. Okay. Date of sale, 1st December 2019. Assessi sold his Mr. X. Mr. X is the Assessi. Sold his sale consideration. His individual house along with the land. Individual house along with the land. Sold for 3 crores and 5 lakhs. Okay. 3 crores and 5 lakhs. What, what was the asset sold? Individual house. With ground. Okay. Asset was sold. Less brokerage selling expenses 5 lakhs. Remember, students, if this brokerage is more than 50 lakhs, then he has to deduct TDS under section 194 uh, M brokerage paid. Then less index cost of acquisition. Say index cost of acquisition is 90 lakhs. Then Long term capital gain before exemption. Less section 54 GB. Now, first point uh, sale of a residential house. You can again invest in a resident, you can again invest in a residential house. You can again invest in a residential house and claim exemption. Investment should be in India and only exemption for only one house will be available because long term capital gain is more than 2 crores here. You can claim 54 and the RLs. 54 EC you can claim 50 lakhs by investing in REC bonds or NHA bonds. Now um, the other section is 54 GB. What is 50? How can I claim exemption of 54 GB? Now Mr. X wants to start a new company. He wants to start a new business. Or a Pudu business. Adhika investment kaga, he sold his property. Now, government is encouraging uh, uh, startup companies. Ma. So, how to claim exemption? Condition is the assessee is required. The assessee is required to incorporate a company. Uh, before the end of the previous year, before the end of the previous year, the SSC is required to incorporate a company before the end of the previous year, 31 3, 2020, or at least before the due date of filing income tax return. Suppose he is subject to tax audit now, 30th September, very can time. So, uh, asset was transferred, asset was sold in the year 1920. So you have to incorporate a company. You have to incorporate a company uh, before the end of the previous year or at least before the due date of filing income tax return. In this company, the associate Mr. X should own, should own more than 25% equity. So a major stake, 25% stake on the guitar. So the amount that is, uh, you have to invest here. So you have to incorporate a company before the end of the previous year or before due date of filing income tax return uh, in which condition is Mr. X, you should own more than 25% equity and the company should be an eligible Startup company, eligible startup company doing eligible startup company doing eligible business. What is eligible startup company? Sir, I say startup and run correct. But a startup company under there, there are certain conditions for startup company. So meaning you have to obtain a certificate from the concerned ministry as an eligible startup. Condition it should be incorporated during the previous year 1416 to 313 21. So the conditions are uh, I will show you the three conditions, just three conditions, and eligible business. Eligible startup company doing eligible business. And then uh, what is startup company? Students, you have to just uh, remember this, not necessary. If a paranga should be 
incorporated during the financial year in which the capital asset is sold or before due date of filing return of income okay sir okay the company is an eligible startup doing eligible business okay the assc has more than 25% shares right sir what is eligible startup adu sollunga three conditions a company engaged in eligible business which fulfills the following conditions the company should be incorporated in india during the previous year should be incorporated during the period in the time the taranga government 1416 to 31321 maybe this can be extended now because of the covid problem now now we are in november 2020 the last date is 31st march you have to in the government gives a chance you can claim exemption of 54 gb provided you set up your own company which should be an eligible startup company conditions are it should be incorporated during the period 1416 five years time taranga maybe this can be extended by one more year because of the covid 19 issue so 1416 la start ay 313 2021 la full you have to incorporate a company and uh, important uh, the turnover does not exceed 25 crores this point you may not understand immediately and this is also not required next uh, update continuation i will teach 80 iac deductions la so this point again gets connected there the total turnover does not exceed 25 crores in the year in which the deduction under section 80 is in the newly startup companies kala government gives 100% deduction of the profit made whatever profit you have made government gives deduction first 7 years la any three consecutive years the entire profits from the startup will be allowed as deduction i'll come to that point 80 iac in artham was children but uh, uh, the total turnover does not exit angiyo again 80 iac la will come back to this uh, startup definition so we will be discussing there also the total turnover does not exit 25 crores in the year in which the deduction is claimed by the assc in the varsha ninga 80 iac claim pandringlo and the year 25 crore exceed aagudadu actually deduction is allowed for three consecutive years ma in a in a period of 7 years starting from the year of incorporation first 7 years le any 3 years sorry any 3 years means uh, consecutive any consecutive 3 years of your choice you can claim deduction i'll show you how to calculate wait only while only if i work out a sum in 80 next discussion will be 80 iac okay deductions la and then it holds a certificate of eligible business from the inter ministerial board of certification or concerned ministry it and you must get a certificate certified or not eligible startup means certified by the concerned ministry so first it should be incorporated in india during the year during the period 1416 to 313321 the total turnover does not exceed 25 crores in the year in which the deduction under 80 iac is claimed it holds a certificate of eligible business from imbc inter ministerial board of i'll repeat this once again when i next discuss uh, when i discuss adiac our eligible business again you can just read this before eligible business na enna sir i'm beginning you have you will get a certificate only if uh, the business is like this enna na a business carried out by an eligible startup engaged in students listen innovation development or improvement of products or processes or services see government wants innovative or improvement of the existing processes or services something innovative one inga kondu varanu eligible startup means eligible business what is eligible business a business carried out by an eligible startup engaged in innovation development or improvement of products or processes or services so innovative innovative style la irukano or uh, uh, improvisation in the products uh, processes uh, the services uh, something new or it should be a scalable business model with a high potential of employment generation or wealth creation if there are conditions satisfy anada it will you will get a certificate as a startup company 
இது கரெக்டா யூ மஸ்ட் சாட்டிஸ்பை ஆல் தீஸ் கண்டிஷன்ஸ் அப்பதான் யூ வில் கெட் அ சர்டிபிகேட் ஃப்ரம் ஐ எம் பிசி மெனி ரிஜெக்ஷன்ஸ் ஆர் டேக்கிங் பிளேஸ் கவர்மெண்ட் அவ்வளவு ஈஸியா தே டோன்ட் சர்டிஃபை ஸ்டார்ட் அப் இட் சுட் சர்டி இட் சுட் சாட்டிஸ்பை திஸ் கண்டிஷன் எ ஸ்கேலபிள் பிசினஸ் மாடல் வித் அ ஹை பொட்டென்ஷியல் ஆஃப் எம்ப்ளாய்மெண்ட் ஜெனரேஷன் ஆர் வெல்த் கிரியேஷன் ஆர் இன்னோவேஷன் டெவலப்மெண்ட் ஆர் இம்ப்ரூவ்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் ப்ராடக்ட்ஸ் திஸ் இஸ் just before exam you can read no need to uh, just go through and then understand okay then that's all so these are the points you uh, so coming back to this so the assess e mr x sir, he has to incorporate a company uh, during the previous year in which the individual house was sold or before the due date time allowed for filing income tax return in in this company mr x should own more than 25% equity and the company that is incorporated should be an eligible company doing eligible business eligible business na sonane innovative innovative work no ila improvement or development of the products processes or services or it should be a business uh, uh, with the potential to generate employment or wealth creation abdena define pan appo da you will get a certificate from the concerned ministry as eligible startup and then you can claim deduction now ella conditions are satisfied yes sir it is an eligible startup it is an eligible startup company it is an eligible startup company doing eligible business and certificate is also obtained from the concerned ministry okay then you can claim deduction what should i do for claiming the deduction the company say assessee enna panirka he has invested this money he has invested in uh, equity of this company say he has invested 51 percentage equity in this company he has invested the end 3 crores he has invested 3 crores in this company for subscribing equity 51 percent equity on the company la 51% equity subscribe பண்றதுக்கு he has invested 3 crore which is from sale of his individual house in the 3 crore apply கொண்டு போய் in the இதுல deposit he has invested and he got 51% equity uh, in this company in turn now now after invest now the company should purchase purchase eligible plant and machinery company on the end of one no uh, eligible plant and missionary with this money three crores with this money three crores the company has to purchase within due date of filing income tax return the company is required to purchase eligible plant and missionary you know what is eligible plant and missionary same thing what we discussed in additional depreciation about uh, yeah should not be a building or uh, furniture all of the kurtu pan it should not be a second hand missionary it should be a sec- it should not be a second hand missionary correct it should not be uh, say um, the next one is should not be aircraft or a ship and if you remember should not be an uh, asset used in should not be an office equipment uh, or should not be an asset should not be an asset used in office or guest house if you remember students it and our additional depreciation are there and then it it should be uh, it should and it and where the whole of the cost is allowed as deduction in one year other than the section 35 or 35 ad where in additional depreciation is not allowed adey mari ingiyo eligible kada it should not be a second hand machine it should be a plant and machinery first it should be a plant and machinery first not a building or a furniture it should not be a second hand machinery it should not be an aircraft it should not be an asset uh, for example sometimes is on the technology ninga start pandra business on the technology driven startup company or the computers will qualify for deduction if it is a technology driven startup then computer idla on the office assets used in office our computer is also used in office additional depreciation is not allowed but if it is a technology driven startup company 
then computer will also qualify as plant and machinery abin sorry Uh, okay, so suppose if it is a manufacturing company and the computers are also purchased, then it is not eligible. I'll work out one some more for you. So these are the points which you already studied in uh, depreciation. So now, how to claim the deduction, ma? Now with this three crore, the entire three crore, the entire three crore that was invested by Mr. X in subscription of. 51% equity is used by the company for purchase of eligible plant and machinery for purchase of eligible plant and machinery therefore 54 gb exemption is available uh, how to calculate exemption sir exemption is exemption is same as section 54 f if entire net consideration is invested if entire net consideration is invested Entire capital gain will be exempted. Entire yes sir three crore. Ah, uh, pre shares purchase for it. With that money, the company bought eligible plant and machinery for three crore. Therefore, entire net consideration is invested by me, and in turn, the company has invested in purchase of eligible plant and machinery. Therefore, entire long term. So that this is how the capital gain shall be exempted. Okay, now suppose if amount invested, sir, uh, I invested three crore actually. Now I invest for another three crore, sir. But the company invested only say two crore forty lakhs, two crore forty lakhs. Then amount invested divided by, correct? Ah, huh? so the proportionate amount invested divided by net consideration, amount invested divided by net consideration into long term capital gain. Two crore ten lakhs. This is how eighty percent exemption you will get. So this is how much. First term, you have to invest in an eligible startup company in which you should own more than twenty five percent equity. As I say, with uh, the money three crores, he invested and uh, subscribed fifty one percent equity in his company, and with this money, the company bought eligible plant and machinery. Therefore, amount invested by net consideration into long-term capital gain. Amount invested, amount invested divided by net consideration into long-term capital gain. If entire net consideration is invested, entire capital gain shall be exempted. If part of net consideration is invested, then proportionate exemption will be availed. and then suppose in case the company is not in a position to uh, invest in eligible plant and machinery before due date due date kula invest pannano like what we how we discussed other sections are they mari da suppose due date kula if the company is not in a position to <coughs> purchase eligible plant and machinery then the same can be deposited in capital gain account scheme the same can be deposited in capital gain deposit scheme like what how we discuss other section and after deposit exemption will be given and now the company within one year within one year time allowed is only one year within one year from the date of subscription of shares by the assessee the company within one year Capital gain deposit scheme. The deposit for now, section fifty four. If you remember, two years for purchase, three years for construction from the date of sale. Here, if the money is deposited in capital gain deposit scheme, one year time from the date of subscription of shares by the S C. The S C is required to uh, the company is required to purchase within one year. Kulla, they have to purchase eligible by withdrawing this money. They have to uh, use it for acquiring. Plant and machinery, eligible plant and machinery. So the time allowed is due date. Within due date, the company is required to acquire eligible plant and machinery. Otherwise, uh, they can deposit in capital gain deposit scheme, claim exemption for now, and within one year, this amount can be uh, withdrawn and used for acquiring plant and machinery. This one year is. From the date of subscription of shares by the SSC. Okay, all this if you go through, you will understand. Man. That's all. And finally, after claiming exemption, you all know there is a lock-in period. There is a lock-in period. Correct. Ah, the lock-in period is five years from the date of purchase. Five years from the 
date of purchase okay and in case of computer being the core as a technology driven startup and the computer will be the core asset illaya yeah? lock in period is 3 years computers ku 3 years okay computers ku 3 years plant and machinery ku 5 years so these are the points eh, students 54 gb exemption is available to an individual or huf the house or plot of land transfer should be a long term capital asset the assessee should incorporate a company being an eligible startup company in which the assessee should subscribe more than 25% shares meaning of eligible company idu paathom meaning of eligible startup meaning of eligible business go through this okay and then amount of exemption similar to section 54f if entire net consideration is invested entire capital gain will be exempted if part of net consideration is invested then amount invested divided by net consideration into long term capital gain then scheme of deposit if the new asset is not acquired within the time allowed the same can be deposited under capital gain deposit scheme for the purpose of claiming exemption and then within one year from the date of subscription of shares the eligible company is required to purchase new plant and machinery lock in period 5 years for shares and 5 years for assets that is the ex he invested uh, he invested uh, uh, 51 percentage illa even the shares have a lock in period of 5 years he cannot uh, uh, sell his shares within a period of 5 years similarly even for the assets plant and machinery 5 years 3 years for computers if it is a technology driven startup what is new plant and machinery new plant and machinery does not include the following so these are the points students now you can just this is only some available in 54 gb okay just read this uh, after 1 minute we will continue or a 1 minute break yeah students mr a sold his residential property on 2nd february 2020 for 90 lakhs and paid brokerage at 1% on sale price so sale second february 2020 for 90 lakhs and paid brokerage at 1% of sale price he had purchased the said property in may 2001 in june 2020 may uh, february la sale in june he invested 75 lakhs in equity shares of a private limited an eligible startup company which constituted 43% of share capital 25% is more than 25% is okay a private limited utilized used the said amount for the following purposes in the 75 lakhs purchase of new plant and machinery in july 65 lakhs included in a above 8 lakhs for purchase of car yeah one important point i forgot to tell you alanda it should not be it should not be a second hand machinery it should not be building or furniture it should not be uh aircraft or ship it should not be an asset used in office or residential premises and it should not be road transport vehicle same thing cars uh, cars under does not qualify so the 65 lakhs la 8 lakhs cars air conditioners purchased for 1 lakh uh, included in a above here was installed at the residence of mr a so it is used uh, in residential house amount deposited in capital gain deposit scheme on 28 september 2020 10 lakhs compute the chargeable capital gain assume that mr a is liable to file his return of income on or before september 30 and he files his return of income on 29 september 2020 so this is the sum students already paathukonga one by one check pannala first sale consideration is 90 lakhs selling expenses 1 percentage 90000 yeah, then 89 lakhs 10000 index cost of acquisition 2436 divided by 100 into 289 long term capital gain then let's section 54 gb condition number 1 assessee should be an individual or huf sir mr a is an individual the re residential property should be a long term capital asset yes sir 2001 or 2019 20 so more than 24 months long term sir then the assessee should incorporate a company in the year 1920 or before the due date of filing income tax return sir june 2020 la he incorporated a private limited sir and it is an eligible startup company doing eligible business and already 75% equity shares 43% which is more than 25% and the company used it for the following so how to calculate 54 gb exemption now how to do this <clears throat> one minute students
students are you able to uh, view this paaka mudida students this excel sheet yeah okay now start pandra now listen section 54 gb ready yeah so first starting point sale consideration Ninety lakhs less brokerage net consideration less index cost of acquisition note one. Twenty-four lakhs thirty-six thousand divided by hundred into two eighty-nine. So twenty-four lakhs thirty-six thousand into two eighty-nine divided by hundred. Okay, long-term capital gain before exemption, which is this less section fifty-four GB point number one. individual yes sir second long term capital asset yes sir then company uh, a company should be incorporated should be incorporated during the previous year in which the asset is sold or before the due date of filing return should be an eligible eligible startup doing or engaged in eligible business okay uh, then the assessee mr x should own more than 25% equity in this company now he has invested ma 43% okay amount invested now what happened he has invested 75 lakhs he has invested amount invested 75 lakhs sir total ah A private limited used uh, sorry he has invested seventy five lakhs seventy five lakhs the co the company used the same for the following the seventy five lakhs the purchase of new plant and machinery for sixty five lakhs so new plant and machinery sixty five lakhs along the less ineligible cars not eligible ma road transport vehicle not eligible road transport vehicle not eligible apra less ac used in residence residents not eligible adavar 1 lakh so eligible assets nu paathinga na it is only 56 lakhs a one second let me see purchase of new plant and machinery 65 lakhs 8 lakhs cars and 1 lakh ac and then balance before due date out of 75 lakhs 65 lakhs invested all are 9 lakhs not eligible for 56 lakhs are. and then balance 10 lakhs he deposited the company deposited in capital gain deposit scheme so add 10 lakhs add cg deposit 10 lakhs so total amount invested 66 lakhs so exemption Amount of exemption sixty six lakhs divided by divided by net consideration. What is net consideration? Ma eighty nine point one into long term capital gain eighteen sixty nine nine sixty eighteen sixty nine nine sixty. That's our amount of exemption sixty six divided by eighty nine point one into eighteen sixty nine nine sixty is equal to thirteen eighty five one fifty six thirteen eighty five one fifty six taxable long term capital gain. So that's all. Now lock in period five years for shares and. Plant and machinery, and then uh, the new uh, the capital gain deposit amount ten lakhs. Clear? 
should be used within one year for purchase of eligible plant and machinery within one year from the date of subscription of shares by the RCC. So this is go through. This is 54 GB. This is 54 GB. So amount invested 66 lakhs divided by net consideration 89.1 into long-term capital gain 1869-960, exemption, balance tax. This is how 54 GB is calculated. 54 GB is calculated. That's all my the sum. So try Pananga. Next up, one minute. One minute, students, one minute. Ready? Now this is deductions, chapter 6 a deductions. Effectively, we have this section, students. Plus, now I know one name on 80 double J double A matto edita is override on. So first uh, I will teach uh, because 50 GB related. Section 80 IEAC. It's a small section, uh, or almost small section. Tax incentives for new startups. Tax in the government gives chapter 6A deduction under 80 IAC tax incentives for new startups. See, all these sections may or may not come in your examination. That's all. Just we have to cross all these all. Objective of this section why government introduced this section incentive? Why section 80 IAC provides tax incentive for startup companies for startup companies startup businesses in order to aid their growth in the early phase of their business so other objective in mind government has introduced any in incentives or what is the incentive here is the answer quantum of 100 percentage of profits 100 percentage of profits by an eligible startup 100 percentage of profits by an eligible startup from an eligible whatever profits you make will be but one condition the period of deduction any three consecutive years out of seven years is the provision main provision any three consecutive years out of seven years beginning from the year in which the eligible startup is in court. that's all students is the section 80 iac what is an eligible startup? Same. But Indian Sudirpan should be incorporated as either as a company or LLP. For claiming this deduction, for claiming 54 GB, the SOC should incorporate a company. But for claiming 80 IAC deduction, either it can be incorporated as a company or LLP, should be engaged in an eligible business, should be incorporated during the period 16 to 2021. Certificate from IB, IMBC, Inter-Ministerial Board of Certification. The total turnover does not exceed 25 crore in the year in which the deduction of the IAC is claimed. And what is an eligible business? It is engaged in innovation, development or improvement of product, process, services or a scalable business model with high potential for employment generation or wealth creation. Eligible startup and eligible business have the same meaning. Deduction is 100% of profits. For any three consecutive years, it can be one, two, three, or it can be two, three, four, or it can be three, four, five, it can be four, five, six, it can be five, six, seven also. Any three consecutive years out of seven years beginning from the year in which the eligible startup is incorporated. Now, the students, here is a sum. Go through this sum. In the sum, Paranga. A private limited was incorporated on 1419 and it holds a certificate of eligible business from the notified IMBC Inter-Ministerial Board for certification 
it is engaged in innovation of new products anyway certificate karchitta its total turnover and profits and gains from business or profession for the year 1920 to 25 26 are as follows so starting from 1920 20 21 are as follows turnover kurthirukam for all the seven years loss loss profit 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 is a private limited eligible for any tax benefit under the provisions of the income tax act for assessment 2021 if s yes, what is the benefit available the company being an eligible startup doing eligible business can claim deduction 100% of profits as deduction for any three consecutive years out of seven years beginning from the year of incorporation so if you think in a first year it can 1920 or assessment 2021 it cannot claim a loss second year it cannot claim because it is a loss third year onwards at iac allowed but if you start claiming one of the conditions for claiming at iac is the turnover should not exceed 25 crore yes sir in the year limit 25 crore tanla sir okay it is not exceeding 25 crore okay but is it advisable to claim deduction in the year 21 22 because this loss will be carried forward this loss will be carried forward these two 2.52 and 1.5 4.02 will be set off against this and only the balance will be allowed as deduction correct huh? these two losses will be carried forward and set off again 6.5 only the balance will qualify for deduction and if this is the first year the subsequent two years you have to claim so is it advisable the answer is no then what will be your advice these two after set off the amount of income is very less so other don't claim this year but you can claim for 22 23 8.25 lakhs apply deduction kadachiram 9.5 apply deduction kadachiram and 8 lakhs apply deduction kadachiram correct ah see all these are in crores like all these are in crores it is not somewhere i have to give this it is in crores either you can claim these three years which will be more beneficial or you can claim <coughs> these three years it is your choice but any three consecutive years out of seven years commencing from the year of incorporation that's all students so i want to stop here maybe uh, another some i'll give answer to this one more some ca final sum aduk answer irukka and then this is isoula final sum same as this sum all right okay i'll stop here students next class um we will meet and we are in a three mark is the one or two sums is the mudicht we will take up some important problems and set off and carry forward sariya okay so next class we will continue thank you so much ipo yaravadu doubts kekkana mattum wait